Happy New Year from Mike at Barry's Best Honey to you all. Thank you for your support, and I hope you have a wonderful 2022. Hey there, folks. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana. <clears throat> so, we're out here today. It is New Year's Eve. So, hope everybody has a happy new year this upcoming 2022. I never say things couldn't get worse, because you never know what may happen in this world today. We sure are topsy-turvy. Anyway, <clears throat> again, it is the 31st. And you know me, I told you a hundred times, I don't go with my hives in the winter. But this isn't really even winter. It was 86 out here today. It was 85 yesterday. It's hot. That's hot. And those two little nukes we got, you know I'm nurturing them. And uh, they were so light the other day, I, I sent that short out and was weighing colonies. And I got some that are light, but they're not so light that it's detrimental. But those two, it could be detrimental. So I'm going to go snag some honey from a... Uh, heavy I got a few hives that when you lift the backs of them they are super heavy I mean really heavy so they can afford to lose a couple frames of honey but I'll tell you the problem out here when we got this hot winter weather like this these bees fly and there's wildflowers what we call dockweed I don't think they get anything from that but there's some yellow flowers it's like called butterweed or something there's some um, wild mustard popping up here and there but there's just nothing for them to sustain a, a, a big colony. Uh, so we've really, really, really got to be careful when it's hot like this because these bees will fly and burn so much energy and have to be fed. We don't want to get to that point where they have to eat and they'll eat through the store so very, very fast. So we don't want to do that. So I'm gonna throw some honey in those two little nukes uh, the ones that are super, super heavy, they'll be fine. We've only got two months to go, so we'll be all right. Um, I hate opening hives this time of year. I like cold winters. As much as I don't like cold weather, I like cold, cold winters because it's just better for the bees for me. In my time down here, when we have, and, and for me, cold is obviously a relative term, different than a lot of you guys up there. But, you know, when I can get sustained uh, overnights in the 30s and 40s and in the 20s, and you know the afternoons get into the 50s and 60s and then we get some warm spells here and there but we mainly stay in the 60s as the highs and sometimes in the 50s as the highs and all that that's great that my bees have done so much better when we've had longer periods of cold they don't fly as much they stay in the colonies more clustered and they don't eat as much and they don't burn all that energy and it seems to knock the pests back a little bit you know you don't have that strong surge of beetles in the spring and you know just it's just better it seems like for them uh, warm weather they just keep on growing beetles and keep on burning energy so you got to do something so let's go feed those nukes uh again new year's i was going to do a 2021 recap type of video but then i went nah i would have had to dig back through two different terabyte drives and my hard drive on the computer and pick and pull different videos and this is very time consuming so uh I didn't have the time as I'm just trying to really catch up with a lot of things while I got time off. So this is uh, the end of 2021. We're gonna go nurture a couple nukes. So I am gonna throw a veil on because uh, where I get the food from, I haven't been in those colonies in probably a couple months. So they tend to be ornery when they haven't been messed with or fooled with. And I don't wanna get all stung up for the new year. It's not that I'm doing anything tonight. We got uh, we're gonna be home, but. And you know, I've told you, I don't go in my colonies at all this time. Even so when I get warm days, you know, I don't go in them just for nothing. Of course, for that matter, I don't go in my hives for nothing anytime. Uh, but, ooh, they're busy too. I don't, uh, I don't uh, fool with them. And I'll tell you why. Look at this first. Plenty of activity on a warm winter's day. So I've said it a few other times and you know, my, my whole philosophy or management is not, don't mess with them in the winter because there's no reason to. Well, I'm just a firm believer that if we set them up properly in the fall and have them heavy, you don't need to go in them. So and you shouldn't need to. They should be set for a couple months. Just because it's warm, uh, I don't feel like I need to go in and disturb them and take a chance of messing something up. And so as you know, being that I'm nurturing these two nukes, 
gotta do something for them. And even though I got warm weather, we actually got some 20 and 30 degree weather coming in in the next couple of days, so I really can't feed them. And I'm not gonna put any dry sugar on them just yet. I'd rather give them some honey frames, which I should have. So let's let's figure out which one's good and heavy. I can't remember. There was like four or five of them that were super heavy, and uh, we'll rob from there. Let me look around and I'll get back. This colony was one that needed to do some growing coming out of spring. Look at the beetles, guys. See? Cold winters help with that. There you go, lots of beetles coming out from under it everywhere. They had them trapped and the oil is dried up and they're inside there. That one tried to take flight. So we're gonna put in a new trap. All right, I ran real quick, grabbed some traps. See, there's another issue with opening them up. They had these beetles all corralled on the top and some of y'all might be freaking out when you see that many beetles, but I see them from time to time like that. And they just don't, they're not going to go anywhere in the winters of this warm. Now those beetles that would have been in that corralled inside there, they would have froze if we'd had sustained cold weather, but we didn't. And we're, we haven't, and we're not going to. I'm going to get some cold nights coming, but it's not going to last long. So... It's just something we deal with down here. Just have to hope your bees are strong enough to control them. Whew, and they don't like me taking it. And I just ripped it. So we're gonna close this up pretty quick. We got honey laying around. Get some beetle traps in here fresh. I don't blame you. Wouldn't you be mad too? I don't blame them. Let's throw a foundation on the edge. That way we don't give the beetles a place to lay eggs. I'm gonna get a couple traps in here this time. Look, the beetles were inside the trap. That was no doubt. The problem was there was no I don't have to take their beetle. I was hoping to save their beetle jail, but I had to scrape it. But uh, the beetles wouldn't die because there was no oil in it. Yeah, they're not happy. That's kind of what you get when you don't ever open them. Get out of the way, lady. There we go. Let's put one in there. Let's get a second one in here. Give them a couple places to there we go. Let's get a lid back on these bees. You can't blame them for being upset. I just tore honey from them. And we'll see about getting another one opened up. Not near as bad, there's a couple of them, but nothing like we saw a minute ago. Let's see what this trap looks like. Ah. Give them a couple fresh ones since I got them. That's a nice frame of honey. That's what we want. This frame out here. I'm gonna give these bees a little bit. They didn't have as many beetles, so I'm gonna give them a little bit of foundation. I mean, uh, comb. I'm gonna give them two fresh traps, or one rather. Those traps do work. 
They said the beetles were in there. They just couldn't die because the oil was all dried up. I'm not going to give those little nukes more than a frame each because they're so small. I don't want to waste a bunch of resources. So that's where we're at. Let's go move some honey. Alright, so here we are at our little nukes. This one here was this is done. Get that bucket in. Let's do a little smoke to them. They're so tiny that there's a little few of them there. Let's take a look at those. They're so tiny. They don't need a lot of food. Now the issue you're gonna say, well, you're putting this on the side. And you're right, they can't move over to this should they have to cluster. Well, it's always ideal to have it above them. Or they can get to it as they move up naturally but we can't do that i have some fondant on order i don't want to do dry sugar if i can help it i've always told you that but i'm gonna try some fondant this year and see what that does that's soft you gotta be careful down here when it gets hot because it runs see that's got nectar in it still so they're gonna get plenty they still got a little bit but anyway the fondant would lay up here and that, that would be good for them i think it'd be better i feel like so, uh, they can't move to the side when they're in a the cluster, maybe, until the, you know, it warms up. But we warm up every day here, so they should have no problem moving and eating. There's the queen. They should have no problem, you know, breaking cluster in the morning and going out and eating. And then coming back, you know, eating their honey and then come back and cluster. Alright, so really, I'm going to put it next to... I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to give them this. I'm going to take this foam out. Remember, honey does insulate. They're going to have more honey than they got bees. I'm going to throw this in here. I didn't see any beetles in here, that's good. They sure couldn't take it. So let's do that. Let's put this back in and that gives them honey on either side of the nest there's nothing on top so that is not a good thing for anybody that might be asking that question or wondering but hey we don't stay clustered around here long enough for them not to be able to move up north that would be a problem up north they can't move to the honey when they're in that cluster let's do the same with this other one now, this one actually has a little bit of weight left to it this one I fed and it's not super it's kind of light like on one side like in the back of it but they got more bees so let's look nothing there didn't see any beetles on these either and this is usually the beetle spot over here now let's I'll tell you I'm glad I put a jacket on full jacket because uh, those bees back there got nasty they don't like you in here I can tell you that when you haven't been in them a while. There's just a little bit on that. So we'll probably replace that frame. Because this has got the least amount of action. Let's do that. Let's do a quick inspection. See, this has got weight on it, this frame. Not much. I don't have my glasses, so it's hard to see the queens. Um, and I surely can't see any brew, but this got a little bit of nectar on it too, and some bee bread, so this one's a little better off than the other one, but it doesn't seem like that many bees, just not. Yeah, so I'm going to, this was the other frame that was suspect, it's got nothing on it. Yeah, we're going to. So I'm going to remove that other frame. There you go, nice full frame of honey. We'll put their little insulator board back in. I don't think we're good. That'll do it.
Easy, right? That's beekeeping in the winter time. All right, folks, and just like that, I broke a sweat. <laughs> On New Year's Eve, yeah, it's warm, so. But look, I it can be it can be 50, and I'll break a sweat. Just sweat a lot. But anyhow, that's it. Just wanted to feed those real quick. It was on my mind. When I went and weighed the other day, I said, well, they can wait till I get that fondant in. And I said, no, I'm not going to. I'd rather feed them the fondant because the way it's processed, it can already uh, be eaten. I've seen them use it in Europe. And then Hooterville Honey, he told me about the Hive Alive stuff. And I watched a couple videos. And I got some on order for the Hive Life Conference. Going to go pick them up. So right now, I'm still on still on schedule to go there picking up that fondant but i thought you know let me get some honey because when i weighed some of those they were so doggone heavy now opening that up it wasn't the greatest thing to see the uh, mites i'm gonna take a seat real quick i mean the mites i'm sorry the, the small hive beetles but that's what you get with a warm winter it's what you get with heat you know they can continue to go in there and lay and thrive and you can see if you notice when I picked it up and I'll see you know how it looks when I edit the video you should be able to see it they had them in one area I open it up and boom they go everywhere they were all in the trap but the trap was already dried up so put some fresh oil in there hopefully they start driving whatever's left in there back in the trap but that's what we get with these warm warm winters but good cold winters seem to do so much better for my bees and pests at least we got the two nukes taken care of uh, when I busted all that honey loose I didn't want to I was gonna get two frames out of one colony but once I busted that honey loose, I wanted to get the beetles to, taken care of, put the frame in, and get out of there. I didn't want no robbing. It's getting the evening, so it shouldn't be a problem. We got some high 20s and low 30s coming in the next couple days, and then uh, it's back warm again. So, Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and go. I figured I'd do this real quick. I'm home and uh, waiting for 2022. Yep, that's right. That year flew by. So here's that. Hope you all have a happy new year. Best wishes. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful evening. May Lord God bless you now and bless you in the year to come, the new year to come, 2022. We'll see y'all later. <laughs>